And welcome everyone to a special volume of the Black Guy special. Wrestling Podcast. Special. Excellent, yes. actually. Um, this is a special one because we don't usually do bonus podcasts. Not only do we not do bonus podcasts, but we typically don't do anything that's not wrestling really. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But this is a very special episode because, like I said, we don't do guests on this show. We do co-hosts. Absolutely. But today's co-host is one of the most influential hip-hop groups of all time. These guys literally changed my life in a way that I, I cannot explain. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a professional, but I'm trying my hardest not to geek out right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But No, nah, I want you to geek out. Yeah, <laughs> I want you to geek out. But it's with great pleasure. I never thought I'd get a chance to do this. We have Fonte, rapper Big Poo. We have little brother here on BGW. <laughs> Felt gentlemen. Thank you for coming on so much, man. Absolutely. Thank y'all for having us. Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all. Yeah, like, like I said, I'm gonna try my hardest during this duration of this to be as professional as I can, but I'm gonna say, like in 15, 20 minutes, like the fan of me is really gonna start start coming, <laughs> start coming out. But of course, it's me. I'm Scotland Underwood. Uh coming in second. It is Nolo Green. Yes, and salute to our um brothers Chaz and D Matt that couldn't be here, but we're gonna jump right into it because you know time is precious and we you know we appreciate you guys for even taking the time to do this yes but before we really get started how are y'all doing tonight i'm good man good. You, and luckily like y'all caught us this is one of the few times that we're actually together you know what i mean because we live in mm -hmm. different cities so uh but this was just a day where we you know actually were together uh you know we you know getting stuff ready for the block party and uh finishing up work on the documentary yeah so mm -hmm. um this fall has been insane. <laughs> but, man, who, who, yeah, man, no. So, so, man, like, like said, we appreciate y'all. No, we no, we appreciate y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, typically the way we would do this, we, we usually talk about wrestling content and everything like that, but we were told that y'all really don't watch wrestling yeah. like that. <laughs> nah, nah, <laughs> not at all. Nah, I used to watch when I was a kid. Like, you know, when I was younger, I would watch it, like, back in the... You know, days like I'm talking like the old school niggas, like Maggie yeah. and Tully, Bland Tully Blanchard and <laughs> goddamn Jake the Snake and goddamn Rock and Roll Express, Midnight Express. Like that was the day. And like I grew up in I grew up in uh in Robinson County, a small town called Red Springs. So all the shows used to come to the I think the Cumberland, Cumberland County Arena, all the all the shows they would come to Fayetteville. And so you would see the you know the promos. Coming this Friday at the Cumberland <laughs> County Arena, you know what I mean? You know, it'd be that. So, like, uh, that's like my earliest wrestling memories. And, um, but you know, as I got older, it's just you know, time interest change. You know, I, I kind of stopped watching it. But those early days are like Jake the Snake and Magnum TA, Tully Blank, and Ric Flair. I mean, let me just say, like, Ric Flair, I mean, just a Carolina legend, like a Carolina, you know, he unites everybody, like. Everybody, everybody fuck with Ric Flair. It don't matter who you are. Pro black niggas, MAGA niggas, it don't matter. Everybody fuck with Ric Flair. No, th this is true. Cause like, <laughs> like I said, being in this space, like we've learned like Ric Flair is kind of racist. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know what I mean? Like we were very like, nah, we don't really want to talk about Ric Flair. And then like people be like, oh nah, nigga, you need to talk about Ric Flair. He's Ric Flair. Yeah. Listen, listen, man. Like, I mean, who these people are outside of the ring, I mean, you know, we kind of can guess. I mean, I I lived in North Carolina, you know, my whole life. I, I went to school with a, a thousand Ric Flair's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that, that you know, good old boys are no uh, stranger to me. Uh, but, you know, but in terms of uh, just, you know, his, his persona and what he meant, and what he means, you know, in many ways uh, to North Carolina and just, um, you know, just as a kid growing up, like we didn't know none of that shit. You know right. I mean? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we just wanted to just, woo, like we, you know, that, that was, that was all we cared about. That was it, you know, but, um, but yeah, that was kind of the early days of wrestling for me. That was who some of my earliest, uh, most favorite um, wrestlers were. Yeah. You know? I, I stopped. I pretty much stopped watching wrestling Right days of Sting, oh my God. Uh, okay, in the Doom, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Hawking Animal. You know what I mean? Like that—that that was that was where I maxed out at on wrestling. But uh, nah, it's, that was around like what? That was like nine. That was that was, nine. That was 
that was the 90s. 90s, yeah. 97, 98. Yeah, 1979. Yeah, that was probably the last time. Because when I got to school, I got to Central in 97, and then he got there in 98. So at the time, this was like, you know, this is Stone Cold, Goldberg. You know, that's when they was kind of running shit. And so I played football, and one of the homies on the football team, he was a huge Goldberg fan. So it's them Junior Bull. And it's just, of course it was James. <laughs> <laughs> Junior was a little Goldberg fan. So like every time like he would do something in practice, like he'd do a Goldberg pose or some shit. Like it was <laughs> it was that. But that was about all the the wrestling. Uh, that was about all the, the wrestling uh that, that I had, you know, in my life at that time. Had a tap out. No, yeah, we we unfortunately we we deep in the trenches like at this, this point, there's, yeah, I was gonna say there's no getting out for us, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but and like I said, it's dope because like the 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 space in wrestling has changed so much that hip hop has become very integrated with wrestling. Like the biggest weekend, so hip hop is wrestling. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, facts. Like, this shit is wrestling. <laughs> like it's oh god, it's total showmanship. It's faces and heels. It's written storylines. I mean, it's yeah, it's the exact same thing. And you see, the, the way that um, this all kickstarted is when you guys announced Made for Durham, it was the, the promo you guys did for it, which is oh, a yeah, play yeah. off of the classic Booker T segment of him calling Hulk Hogan and Nikki. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And so when I saw it, I was like, I was like, yo, they watch wrestling. This is dope. <laughs> but what was the inspiration? Like, what made you guys go with that as the um, as the promo? Um, that, that was That's a classic 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 clip like whether you watch wrestling or you don't that shit is just funny we've all yeah. seen it. it's funny on so many different levels it's to me it was always funny because obviously we found out hulk hogan uses the word as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. so definitely so, part of his vocabulary exactly so <laughs> when that when booker t slipped up like he he got deep in the character and he slipped up like and then his just immediate remorse it was like that, he thought he was done like oh, I he, was, <laughs> he thought he was done and i'm sure he had no idea that that was like one of the greatest things he ever did oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? it is even every funny. black person felt that like we all knew like damn i just fucked up all this money but, and it's even and it's even funnier when you find out like Booker T really hates Hulk Hogan with a passion. Oh, really? Yeah, so he, he <laughs> know that far down the rabbit hole. So, so he, so they, they beefing for real. Yeah, yeah, they genuinely don't like each other. So when like you go back and watch the clip, you're like, oh, he meant that for real. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. I can't remember. <laughs> from the bottom of his heart, he meant every word he said. <laughs> But yeah, so like I said, um, you guys did the promo and like the promo got excellent, excellent reviews. So like I said, like I felt like you guys gauged like a completely different audience because like obviously you got your fans, people that, you know, support you and everything like that. But being wrestling fans, like it opens up the door because like you said, like the the space between wrestling and hip hop, there's there's really no gap to it. It is kind of intertwined. So with that being said, this is probably the last wrestling question I ask. If y'all were wrestlers, right, <laughs> what would be your theme song that you would come out to? Mm. So you weren't ready for that type of question. Yeah, I would probably <laughs> say if I just had to pick one, uh, mine would be Andy Up. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy Up. Andy I mean, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That fool. Kidnap yeah. yeah. that fool. Coming yeah. for it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I'm, I'm riding with that. Andy Up. I think that's that's it. That's let's see that's, that's perfect. That's, yeah, that, that's key. But um so I'll salute to them. But um so made uh made in Durham, you know what I mean? Big block party is uh October 7th taking place. Uh what was the inspiration that made you guys want to do a block party? Obviously, you guys have done countless tours, concerts, but to do something in Durham, how important is it for you guys to do this? Um, well, I think it was just important just to bring something back to the city that made us, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, we, I mean, we, our touring has changed, you know, we don't tour the way we did, you know, when we was in our twenties, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, cause we're just in different stages of our life, different responsibilities, families and everything. So, um, and that's just not something like, Hey, we're going out for 30 dates. Like, 
Fuck all that. We're not doing that. But uh, but um, but no, um, but the more we kind of kicked around the idea of doing something, you know, literally in the streets, you know, doing something, you know, in in Durham, in the city that birthed little brother, and um, it was just a city that really that's where we found ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, it, we just thought that it would just be dope to do something, you know, in our hometown. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so we started it. It was, you know, again, it started as an idea, but the more we kind of kicked it around, it was like, you know what? Yeah, I think we can we can pull this shit off. <laughs> and so we uh, teamed up with uh, Cicely Mitchell, uh, who used to run Article. Uh, it was a festival that was in Durham uh, some years ago. And uh, who's a, a dear friend of mine and just a real mover and shaker and hustler in the city. And, um, you know, so it's a, a co-production with us and, and her team. And, um, you know, man, it's uh, a lot of moving pieces, like putting any kind of undertaking like this, any kind of block party festival, like anything where you have a big number of artists and you need them to appear mm -hmm. at a place at a certain time, nigga, <laughs> bruh, <laughs> like, <laughs> you understand, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that shit is a lot, you know what I mean, but, um, but no, nah, that was why it was important to us. And, um, you know, it was just a way for us to have fun and just to celebrate life with our friends and our family and uh, just really, you know, have some fun, you know, celebrating our 20th year. No doubt. No doubt. No better way to do it than in your hometown. The city that made yeah, man. Absolutely. So would you say that this is, would you consider this one of the most important shows that you guys have ever put on? Hell yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um it's definitely it's definitely especially since we don't really tour or do shows as much as we used to, um, and then commemorating our 20th year and doing it in Durham and actually being on the production side of mm -hmm. the block party and not just pulling up right, we just showing up and rapping. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 it is definitely, you know, past your first big show. This is the next important biggest important moment you know as far as shows go in our career yeah so like i said you guys brought it up 20 years in the game you know be truthfully 20 plus you know in building everything together and the listening being your debut album but the legacy you guys have left in hip-hop has just been astronomical so in 20 years time like if you guys like if you could go back and talk to yourselves 20 years ago how would you describe the transition from when you guys first started to where you are today man um i think the biggest lesson uh that, that i learned over the 20 years is just that you really have to be the visionary for your own career i saw a tweet uh, the other day where uh and i was saying you know as an artist you know you can't be hands off because most of these people have no fucking clue what they're doing Hmm. So, you know, you have to really see your vision through. And um, that was something that, you know, when we were younger, you always have this vision that, oh, there's, you know, the magic wand that's going to come. There's the person that's going to come and just make it all make sense. And we're going to be out of here. And um, that's very rarely the case. Um, I, I think, you know, it doesn't matter what label you're signed to or who your manager is or who your um who what kind of team you have i mean all those things are important and they can make the difference between you being a successful artist versus you not being successful but the main thing is that you have to know who you are and you have to know where you want to go because if you don't know who you are and where you want to go none of that other shit matters at all you know what i mean like nobody can give you that vision you have to kind of they can help nurture it and they can help hone it but if you don't know who you are and where you want to go and what your vision for your career is, then yeah, it's best, probably best you just wait it out until you know, because you won't get eight alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that would probably be my biggest thing. Uh, I, I just remember us signing our first deal and thinking like, yeah, this is over. It was, we about to be out of here. And we was out of there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we got completely out of there. So that would probably be my thing of just yeah, just reminding myself back then that like yeah, there no one's coming to save you. There's no savior. There's no 
um, magic wand. There's no fairy godmother or fairy godfather coming to change your life or just sprinkle. Nah, you got to know what you want to do and you have to stay the course and see it through. Yes. Um, mine would be, one of mine would be um, uh, be prepared to adjust to a lot of audibles um, or call a lot of audibles. Uh, you know, this this journey is a roller coaster. I mean, life is a roller coaster, but mm -hmm. this journey in the industry is a roller coaster and nothing, nothing rarely goes to plan. No plans <laughs> about that. <laughs> so, so you have to, you have to be able to adjust on the fly. You have to be able to pivot on the fly. And that's tough for a lot of people. Um, it's like, they have the plan. It's A, B, C, D, E. And if it don't go A B C D E, then they they, they don't know what, they don't know what to do. Um, sometimes it go A B F G Z Q <laughs> yeah, right there. D E. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you wow. just you just gotta prepare yourself, you know, to be to pivot, and when it's necessary to pivot, and um, like like along with the nobody's coming to save you, that's also a tough tough lesson that you. You're gonna learn very early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very early. Yeah. I'm about to say I can imagine. Um one I, I watched one of your interview y'all interviews before and it like uh touched me with one of the things you said, because like knowing what each person in your team, when y'all come together, y'all actually have a talk about what y'all want to do, like what the goals in each and different ones have. Because if you don't, it kind of can go left. And like y'all don't, you don't know what you wanted, like one person might have a different success and then right. different uh, definition of success and knowing what you're trying to do with that. Um, I just like, to me, that really hit me. And I would like to thank you for that. Cause I heard, cause uh, luckily for us, we've had, we are like-minded and we've kind of had like, we're, we all been on the same page for the most part of like what we've always wanted to do. And I just feel like more people should like heed that advice and listen to us. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, you know, when you're first getting on, and it's something that you know, Pooh always says, you know, it when you're first getting on, the only thought you have in your mind is making it. But everybody has a different idea of what making it is. Mm -hmm. And you have to have that conversation. And uh one of the things that you know we've learned over the years is just, you know, if you have people in your circle that have talents or skills. Um, you want to put those people in positions where they can continue to hone those skills and they can continue uh, honing and crafting and working in that field. Uh, you know, in, in my experience, you know, it's, it's this is a game where, you know, the longer you play, the luckier you get. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The longer you stay in, um, you know, and of course there are exceptions, but for the most part, I believe, you know, the longer you stay in it, if you stay the course and stay consistent, your chances of success become greater. But the only way you're going to stay in it for a long time is if you're doing something that you love to do. And so um, a lot of times, you know, members on our team, we came up like everybody wanted to rap because that was all we knew. It was just, I just want to rap, I just want to rap, I want to rap. But then, you know, you get years down the line, it's like, you know what, bro? I know you want to rap, but you actually may be better doing this. You know, you seem to have a skill set for people. So maybe you can handle this or you know you seem to have a good eye for graphics so maybe you should do this or you know you are really good with visuals maybe you could do video and handle that and um you know there's a lot of different ways to eat off this game uh way more ways to eat off this shit than being an artist <laughs> you know, everybody yeah. else eats first <laughs> yes <laughs> you just eat last nigga like everybody else going yo squad gonna eat first so you eat so um, that was one of the things that um, that I think has been key for us of just understanding that and knowing where to put people and uh, let people play to their strengths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I knew, like I said, outside of my own biases, I knew you guys had such a, a profound impact because uh, we did our 100th episode a couple of years ago and we actually honored by doing a cover to the minstrel show using our face and you know what i mean i didn't know because the, the love we got from people were like yo y'all listen to little brother and everything like that and i was like i was like my guys out here shining like they always do but um when you guys first got started could you even imagine the impact that you would have on people like was that even something that crossed your mind obviously 
when you're starting something, you're, you want to, you want to be great at it. You want to excel at it. And your goals are going to be different than what you end up doing. But did you think that you guys would have such an impact on people um, when you first got started? Uh, I mean, I didn't, I, 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 yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know what the impact was going to be on anybody. You know, I think that we got so caught up in trying to make the best album we could make um, at the time that you kind of block out outside noise mm. when you're doing that. I still, to this day, I think that's kind of still our MO. Yeah. You know we, I mean? we just block out the outside noise. Um, you know, back then we didn't have any expectations because nobody outside of our circle knew what we was doing. So it was a freedom. Um, that's like when we came back to uh, do Made a Little Watch, the way we did it, people didn't know we was making an album. And that was the closest we got to when we made our, our first, first album, album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. where there was no outside expectations. There was no expectations at all. So, um yeah, when we when we was working on the listening, we were just like I said, we were just trying to create the best album we could with what we had and the knowledge we had, mm. and that was it. <laughs> like <laughs> that was it. Like I wasn't thinking about twenty years from then. I wasn't thinking about twenty days from then. I, it was just, is this the best I could do today? Yeah, and, yeah, and that was it. Yeah, there's never I I've never been, you know, one I I'm not I mean you have to plan some things of course, but I mean I think it's some things that you just can't plan for, and uh, you know when you're making your first record, or when you're making any record, uh, in my experience, the only thing you can really focus on is just the battle that's in front of you, and um you know and that's the that's just kind of become something that becomes a driving force for me, um as our career has just taken a lot of different turns and you know when it's okay no you're no longer doing albums now you're writing for tv and now you're doing you know quest of supreme and now you're doing this like you know it's it, the the project's kind of become bigger in scope and one of the things that has always been my driving force and that keeps me going is just to just solve one problem at a time you know what i'm saying uh you know and, and just really focus on fighting the battle that's in front of you um and when you're making a record yeah, you can think, okay, well, you know, 20 years from now, are people going to like this? And five years is, what is the critical acclaim? I got to make this verse hard as fuck. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, that's that's all I'm focusing on right then. We got to make this song hard as fuck. You know what I mean? Like, we, we have to focus on the job that's in front of us. And uh, that, for me, has been... Um, I think instrumental in, in just keeping us going for so long creatively. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you, do you, would you say that um, when it comes to longevity, especially in music today, do you think about artists don't focus so much on the, the longevity aspect of music? Like you see a lot of artists that, you know, I mean, we, we live in a very instant gratification era when it comes to anything in life, but do you think artists, uh, especially in hip hop are not looking at like, the same thing like they're not looking at five years from now they're focusing on today and is that a good or a bad thing um i think it's it's now that it's like it's generational yeah, right yeah it depends on what you're playing for yeah, yeah. It's, it's generational you know we 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 grew up listening to complete bodies of work whole albums taking the journey reading liner notes mm -hmm. um you know learning where things were recorded and who recorded them and 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 who played clavinet on so, like we we learned all of those things that that was important to us when nowadays that's not what's important to the listener you know it's the song it's i, I want i just want to hear the song or not even hear the song i want to see the song oh, like, i, I want to see the song yeah they <laughs> see music before they listen to it nowadays you know what i mean um yeah, yeah, we we had to use our imagination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't just hop on a site and be like at Q Tip, like, "Yo, track one on Midnight Marauders was crazy, dog." Like, you know, like we didn't have that access, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I think yeah, I, like Pusey, yeah, it definitely is a difference in terms of uh what the intent is uh for a lot of today's artists, and you know, I think 
you know, there's a lot of people who not a lot of the newer artists for just kind of making, you know, disposable music or music for TikTok or just for social platforms or whatever. Um, you know, personally, I just see it as them playing the game that's in front of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what the game is now. If you on a on a major label side, you know what I mean? It's all about, you know, virality and, um, you know, trying to have a viral moment or have a moment uh, on a social platform um, that is really removed from the from the music itself. Um, you know, and because in our time, one of the things that is very different was that I feel in, in our day we was coming up, it was just about music. It was just your music versus everyone else's music. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, my my style is better than yours. My album is better than yours. My rhymes is better than yours. Now it's everything versus everything. So now you could drop the album of your life. And but your outfit was trash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the outfit was trash. Or not even your outfit. It have nothing to do. You can drop an album of your life and like, you know, Cardi B can drop a pregnancy photo and like nigga, you're done. Like that's your day. Like the out you the algorithm, like you've lost. You know what I'm saying? So it's nowadays artists are they are competing on multiple fronts. It's not just I'm competing with a nigga music. I'm competing with a nigga IG. I'm competing with his TikTok. I'm competing mm -hmm. with, you know, it's it's like, bruh. So um, so so for a lot of newer artists that, you know, kind of do take that more visual approach, um, I totally understand it. And um, I don't think I personally don't think it's something that they should be uh reprimanded for or mm -hmm. uh you know, condemned for. You know, I that's just what the game is now. Right. Um, I'm curious to know, do y'all think it is easier today or harder today to be an artist it's i think it's harder you you, you have yeah. you're competing against a lot of other things um like like he just mentioned it's not just music and style of music versus music and style of music now you're competing against everything like attention is up for grabs yeah okay? that's the economy <laughs> we're in. it's an attention yeah. economy it's not a music or it's not a not a, a a money economy. It's a, it's attention. Well, you're fighting for that, and and it's a whole lot of people in that game in that ballpark. It's not just people making music. So, um, yeah, and it's everything has been flattened. I think and decontextualized in the sense that you know, again, in our day, it was you walk into a store and it's do I buy Jay Z or do I buy Outkast? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but now it's do I listen to Jay Z or do I start season four of The Crown or whatever the fuck? Right? Do I watch Stranger Things? Like, is everything banging? Or do I listen to this podcast? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It, it's everything against everything. It's it's a free for all. It's what's that wrestling like the stockade? What's the wrestling shit? We just was, but they just put like ten niggas in a pen and a, just. A roll, 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 roll. Roll. <laughs> Yeah, that's the yeah. to bring it all the way around. That's what the music, I wasn't just the music business. That's what being an artist is now in 2023. It's Royal Rumble. It's you competing against everything, any kind of entertainment, you know what I mean? Like anything. That's what you're up against. Absolutely. So I, I'll definitely say it is, it is harder in a lot of ways. You should definitely listen to this podcast. No, that's, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that that'd be my push to, yeah. to everybody. <laughs> but, hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah, we, we encourage. Yeah. <laughs> um, but who would you say currently are like artists that you know, like current artists today that you've enjoyed listening to or that you think are, you know, next up in the uh in in the industry? Mm. Anybody in particular? That's a good question. I listen to a lot of older. I actually listen to a lot of sports talk radio. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I, don't, I, I do the same exact thing, <laughs> brother. <laughs> I don't listen to as much music as people assume I do. Um, but I really like. Um, and I mean, he's not new, but I really like Vince Staples. Um, yeah. you know, I like his music, and then I just think he's comical. I don't and honest, and very cool. very yeah, honest. Very, That's what is so comical. Um. Uh, so I, I definitely that's somebody I pay attention to. Um, I'm trying to think, man. Um, shit, it's a broad question. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't know if there's anybody I can think of that's like, yo, they got next in the industry. I just don't think of music in those terms. I mean, it's just, I just listen to the shit I like, you know what I mean? Um, uh, and that varies. I mean, a lot of time I do feel like I, I do kind of revisit older stuff. Yeah. Um, like albums I might have missed. Uh, I watched, um, there's a Wayne Shorter documentary on uh, Amazon uh, called Zero Gravity which is uh is amazing and uh so i watched that the other night and that just sent me down like a weather report way short of rabbit hole so um yeah i just kind of be on that i mean stuff i catch i listen to i save it to my playlist or whatever but um yeah i just listen i just listen to the shit i like yeah so just got two more questions and then let you guys get rocking for the rest of the evening but um the documentary you guys got coming out um when you're doing a documentary, I feel like it's a very interesting process. And I was going to ask, doing the documentary, you know, what's the context of it? And as you're doing it, do you become very reflective of your time in the group? You know what I mean? And Because, you know, you're going back. So you're seeing things in, from like older eyes. But do you find like anything that you appreciated back then that you maybe take for granted now? Um, I think shit that's it's very it's very reflective right <laughs> it's, not even just, it's not even just your time in the group like it's, it's your life it's your life <laughs> so you 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 reassessing i don't even want to say reassessing you're just looking at a lot of things differently um as you stated you know we're older now so perspective changes right so you're you're just seeing all these things and you're seeing it from a different perspective now and being able to really not just find but admit your fault acknowledge mm. yeah. acknowledge it and admit like in 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 the role that you played in certain situations um is one of them things where you just be like damn all right yeah that was me <laughs> like, I, was, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was off one i, I was on one right i was there. the villain that was me, <laughs> that, I, I was, that, was me. Yeah. that was me and so um i think it does that man like it just it 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 forces you when you make an honest documentary as we set out to do it forces you to be very honest with yourself and acknowledge and acknowledge different things you know good times bad times you know whatever and and it definitely you know i know for us it it definitely allowed us or set us on a journey where it allowed us to really understand who each other is was and is. Yeah, and accept that yeah, and accept that, that you know because i just being honest you know we did we didn't really know who each other were you mm -hmm. know we just mm -hmm. we just knew we had chemistry making music yeah and that's a totally different thing like you know people a lot of times i think people underestimate it's one thing to say hey this is a guy that i'm cool with and we make great music together it is a completely different thing to say this is a person i am forming a business partnership with Mm. two completely different things yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> <You Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> two very different things and so um yeah man um i, I think that you know with what Pooh was saying to touch on with that yeah uh it definitely makes you reflect it definitely makes you rethink uh you know your, your life um you know um i yeah I, I just think about you know just how many years we spent in the game, like just traveling and touring. Just think about like how many birthdays we missed, how many um, family functions, how many family reunions, you know what I'm saying? Like just uh, little slices of life that we just really missed out on. And, uh, you know, and sometimes you wonder, it's like, well, was it worth it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in our case, I do think it was worth it. Um, but sometimes, you know, you still have that internal debate, you know what I mean? Uh, but um, but nah, that was kind of the journey of the doc. I mean, we started in 2018. You know, we wrapped it up. Uh, it, we're wrapping it up now. Uh, but um, you know, but for like, it's been five years. You know, um, in the process. And uh, yeah, man, this shit yeah. was not pretty. Uh, I will never do this again. <laughs> 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 I'm not doing this no more. So hopefully, you know, we won and done, and you know, That's we it. tell little brother story and and that's and that's it is there a release date planned for it yet 
Uh, we looking for it'll be it's this year. It's you know twenty twenty three, so it'll be like late fall. Late okay, fall. okay, cool, cool. Uh, well, what keeps you inspired after twenty plus years in hip hop? Man, um, I I start for um, I think what keeps me inspired is just uh, I think just always having the feeling that I haven't done my best yet. Um just still feeling like I watched the I read an interview the other day with with Martin Scorsese and he was talking about cinema and he was saying you know I finally now understand the full capabilities of what cinema can be but it's too late and this is fucking Scorsese saying this shit you know what I'm saying like you know he's in his 80s and you know he it was for his uh the new joint he got coming out in a couple months, the Killers of the Flower Moon joint, which I haven't seen it, but supposedly it's some of his hardest shit. You know what I mean? I, I haven't read I haven't read the book, but I definitely read like a summary about it. I was like, oh, okay, I'm here. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. They that shit. They say it's hard as nails. I haven't I haven't seen it yet, but um, but you know, but he was just saying that he was like, you know, I'm just now realizing the full capabilities of of what it is or what cinema can be, and um. Yeah, and that resonated with me. I'm like, dude, this guy's 83 years old, and he made Goodfellas. Like, he could have just stopped there, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, but um, yeah, I, I think that, for me, it resonated because a lot of times I feel like that uh, about hip-hop, about emceeing, just about music is just always trying to tell that truth or, or uh, get to the root of something um i guess that's the best way i can say it so yeah for me i'm always thinking of just like have i done my best um and what drives me is just always feeling that i haven't and that there's always a way i can be better and um that's that's what keeps me going uh mine is similar it's just feeling like i haven't reached my apex mm-hmm. um i'm still climbing up you know my personal mountain searching for perfection which i know is a fruitless pursuit but you still chase it yeah um and I, I i haven't i haven't reached that moment where i feel like i'm on the other side of coming down the mountain so mm-hmm. as long as i feel like i'm climbing up i keep going yeah yeah, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. um no i mean so it's time for you to gush yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, like i said man um I, I would regret this if I didn't tell y'all because I've literally waited since I was 15 to tell y'all yeah. how much y'all changed my life. Like wow. the first time I ever heard you guys, I was in this room, 15 years old, I was doing homework and loving it came on. And I was like, yo, this is incredible. And then doing like the back of like you like catalogs, mixtapes, like everything to the point like I was like, I remember when you guys announced your return. Like I called everybody. I was like, "Yo, did you see little brother coming back?" <laughs> like you, you know what I mean. And even on a deeper sense, like when my son passed away a couple of years ago, I played oh, wow. um, "Leave It All Behind" at his funeral, right? Wow. And I listened to the Mistro, you know, just to, to bring me back to like a sense of peace. Like you guys literally are my favorite musical group, hip hop, R B, like. The fact that I'm even doing this and I've been as professional as I can for my opportunity to tell you guys just thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for changing my life. Like, I appreciate you guys without even really, yeah, I just appreciate you guys. Wow. That's, thank you, that's man. That's crazy. Thank you, man. Thank you. Nah, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 you know, sorry for your loss, man. Thank that's, you. That's, mm-hmm. uh, prayers to, to you and your family on that. Uh, Nah, th- thank you, man. Thank you for listening. I, you know, we accept that and appreciate that. Uh, yeah, you just, again, no plan survives contact. We was just in <laughs> our, a room like this fucking around. I had no idea that it was going to do all this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know so, uh, nah. But, but it's stories like yours that when we hear those, that that that's part of what keep us going as nah, well. Facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, to, to, to hear how what we did touched and and helped you allows us to you know that's energy you know what i mean yeah. to, to keep yeah. going and doing yeah. what we do because when you when we putting words on paper and then 
saying them into a mic like we don't know what it's going to do who is going to touch how it's going to touch people or how it's going to be interpreted or how it's going to be interpreted yeah. so to, to hear your story bro like for us that's powerful and 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 thank you yeah, yeah. and those are things that you can't like quite you know i mean uh, a lot of times people and that was why you know a big reason why you know we wanted to make uh our documentary we kind of felt it was time to tell our story because we wanted people to understand, like, listen, the little brother story is not a sad one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, I think a lot of times people they view success as you know the number of records you sold or the you know how much money you made or did you go number one on this chart or get this plaque or whatever. And you know, man, you know the thing that we kind of saw just moving on, just kind of through our careers. You know, stories like that. I mean, man, like you, you can't put a dollar amount on that. You can't put a chart placement on that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, being popular is one thing, but um, you know, to really resonate in someone's life, you know, what I mean, uh, that's something that you can't buy. Like, you know, what I mean, like. Yeah. You know, you can set yourself on fire if you want attention, but that don't mean nobody gonna care. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. You That's... feel me? So, um, so now, nah, um, when hearing those stories like that, that definitely keeps us going, and um, that that means a lot, brother. Thank you. No, thank you. Like I said, I've already told my job that I'm I'm not showing up on October seventh. I'm gonna be at the block party. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I was like, look, you can schedule me if you want. I'm not gonna be there. I'm gonna be in Durham, North Carolina. So before we get out of here, please let people know about the block party, where they can find you, all that good stuff. Yeah, man. October 7th, Durham, North Carolina. Made in Durham, a little brother block party featuring little brother, of course, Big Crit, the cool kids, Zoe and Tall Black Guy, DJs, Wally Sparks, DJ Hourglass, hosted by Sam J. Shout out to the homie Sam J. Uh, her, her special. Her special, yeah. Uh, September 23rd um, is on HBO. And, no, so, yeah, yeah, so so definitely catch us. You can go to littlebrothernc.com, get all the information, get your tickets, get your merch. We 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 ready, we ready. Hope to see y'all out there. We know we're gonna see you out there. Oh no, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're gonna see me. Like I said, if y'all if y'all need somebody to do like media for y'all, like we we locked in, we good. We we we'll, we'll do it for free and everything. We might need that. I'm holding to it. Yeah, call to me, man. I'm telling you. But um, no. Once again, we appreciate you guys just even taking the time to do this. Thank you very like much. Like I said. Nah, thank you. And to all the people who are like listening to this, I'm sorry. Like, if this fucked up y'all's wrestling, no, we don't care. We don't care about that. We don't care about that. Look, I, look, man. I mean, look. I, I love West Side Gun albums. That's about all the wrestling. <laughs> all the wrestling I got in me right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever West Side talk about on his albums, that's my wrestling reference. That's about all I know. Hey, <laughs> hey, they will be fine. This is a bonus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they are good. <laughs> they are good. <laughs> But yeah, we appreciate you guys so much. Nola, do you have anything else? Uh, the only thing I did one there's one more thing just for because sure. we brought up sports earlier. Uh, sure. I want I was curious on like your thoughts of like how uh, Dion's doing in Colorado. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. slide off. Yeah, it was like yeah, I did. Oh, <laughs> uh, shout out to Coach Prime. I actually got a chance to watch most of that game. Um, excited, you know. It's one of the things with with Dion where you don't always like the way he say things, right? But he's not doing anything any different from a Nick Saban or you know a Jimbo Fisher, or it's just his charisma is different. Obviously, his melanin is different. So the man made must be the money, people. Like let's be <laughs> clear. Come on, and never forget. Never forget. But I think the thing with Colorado specifically was he, it was a one in 11 team and he flipped most of the team around Mm -hmm. and he said it, I ain't winning with y'all cause y'all ain't winning. (laughs) So, and, and it was, I think it was just such a special moment that he had his son who's, who's playing quarterback Mm -hmm. set a record for total yards in his debut game on a uh, FBS level with five, I think it was 505 yards. Yeah. 
And to to be able to share that moment with his son and his other son plays there as well and led the team in tackles. So just to have those moments with his kids as well as the other kids that he's taken in. And um, I think the the running back he coached when he was in a youth or something like that, mm-hmm. Dylan Edwards. So, look, man, this is special. Like, we're seeing something special. I'm rooting for Colorado. Um, I'm looking for the. I'm, I'm looking for a particular Colorado hat. I'm, I'm finna get me one. Um, <laughs> definitely get me one. About to be a Buffs uh, fan. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's go Irish Notre Dame, except for when Dion on. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm definitely, um, definitely rooting for for Dion and in, in Colorado. And I wish him much success because I can see he's he's Colorado. Jackson State was the start. Mm-hmm. Colorado isn't the end. <laughs> so by no means. Enjoy it. Enjoy it while you can. Hey, this is a school who gave him a contract and they didn't even have the money for it. Okay. So you know what this meant to them. And we saw it on Saturday. So hopefully they beat Nebraska by about 20 because I don't like them either. And <laughs> hey, must be the money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska not looking too good anyway. I don't think it's going to go too well in that one, but it's all right. But, uh, again, thank thank you both for your time, you. and uh, thank you for uh, being y'all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank y'all, man. Thank we y'all appreciate it. For sure. no, this is, yeah, this has been fun. So, for me, Scotland Underwood. For me, Solo Green. We are out. <laughs>